In this part of the project management cycle, the initiation phase, we're going to be looking at tools that will enable us to determine which of our concepts is the best. And we're going to use, look at three different concept selection tools, pew charts, the QFD decision matrix within the House of Quality DMADVR toolbox kit, and then we'll be using a process called analytical hierarchy process. Of these three methods, the pew chart is the easiest one to use and the easiest one to implement. But it's not quite as powerful as the QFD decision matrix or AHP. Its advantage is in the simplicity of its application. So the benefit of this discussion of pew charts is that it will give you a place to start in deciding which of your concepts is going to be your lead concept or which concept shows the most promise. The only key term that we'll run across in this particular discussion is the use of the word baseline or datum. If you'd like to learn more about pew chart selections, you can find more information on pages 277 through 280 of our text. The QFD decision matrix is discussed on pages 495 through 496, and we'll talk about AHP in a separate video as well as a separate video for the QFD decision matrix. So what is a pew chart? Well, we have a layout here of a table, and in the far left-hand column, where it says criterion A, B, C, and so forth, those are going to be our customer requirements, or those features or metrics that we're trying to embed in our design. Where it says competitor product or concept, that's going to be our datum. It's going to be our baseline. We're going to compare all of our concepts to that particular competitor or our best concept. The other columns, concepts 1, 2, and 3, will be where we rank our concepts against the datum. So to get a better idea of what the pew chart's actually doing, we're going to take a look at uh, each individual concept, and if our concept is better than our competitor, we're going to rank our concept with regard to that particular customer requirement or metric as a plus 1. If our competitor is better than we are with regard to that requirement, we'll rank our concepts lower. We'll give it a minus one. And if we're equal to our competitor, then we'll rank ourselves as a zero. So let's look at a particular example. In this case, we're going to be looking at cherry pickers. And what we're going to embed in our design are the following features. We want the cherry picker to have a heavy lift capacity. We want to look at the payload attachment mechanism. We want to embed an easy payload release. We want to look for high-speed motion, and so forth, on down the list, clear down to where you see safety at the very end. Well, we've identified our best competitor, our toughest competitor, and we have come up with three different concepts. Concept 1, the mobile tower crane. Concept 2, the gantry crane. And concept 3, a boom crane. So with regard to heavy lift capacity, our competitor is better than we are with regard to concept one. So concept one is ranked lower than the competitor uh, in that particular metric. Concept two, however, looks better with heavy lift capacity than does our competitor. And concept three, the alternate boom crane, is also better than the competitor. If we go down to payload attachment, and we look at the comparison between the toughest competitor and Concept 1, we see that Concept 1 and the competitor are about the same, so we rank that as a zero. Concept 2 is better with regard to payload attachment, and Concept 3 is the same. We'll do one more comparison, easy payload release. Concept 1 is the same as the toughest competitor. Concept 2 is better, and Concept 3 is the same. Now, We'll follow that procedure all the way down uh, till we get all of the metrics compared between our datum, or our benchmark, and each one of our concepts. When we get through, we're going to sum up all of the positives of each concept and all of the negatives of each concept. So when we sum up the positives for concept one, we find that we have a total of three areas where we're better than our competitor but we have five areas where we're not quite as good as the competitor. So we're going to add the positives to the negatives, and so concept one will score a minus two. There are two more negatives than there are positives. 
Concept two, same thing, we have eight positives and four negatives. So we end up with a positive four. So concept two is looking promising there. More positives than negatives. Concept three, we come up with seven positives and three negatives. And we end up again with four. So of these three concepts, concept one isn't looking as good as concepts two or three. But right here you see that we have a tie with concepts two and three. So we took each of those metrics, compared them to our toughest competitor, and evaluated our concepts relative to our competitor with the one being better in each metric or feature area, zero being the same, and minus one being the benchmark. We added up all the positives and all the negatives and then sum those to get the final score, the total weighted score, to see which of our three concepts was faring the best relative to our competitor. So the question comes down to which is the best concept? Well, in the case of concepts two and three, we end up with the same total weighted score. So how do we decide which of those two concepts is the best? And it could be that actually there's going to be yet an additional concept that will combine the best of concepts two and three to come up with yet a better concept. So we try to combine the strengths of those different concepts to, to offset even our competitor and come up with an additional concept that didn't exist before. We also want to look at where we ranked below our competitor and how we might come up to either at least equal to our competitor or better yet even outdo them with respect to a certain feature. And so here's our new concept where we combined the best of concepts two and three, tried to offset some of those negatives, and now we've come up with 11 positives, two negatives, and a total score of nine. So by looking at the strengths of these two together to come up with a fourth concept, we came up with a considerably better concept. We also tried to offset where we could some of these weaknesses and do better where we were the same. So with regard to this particular example, precise positioning, uh, we tried to take concept two, give the features that concept two embedded to improve, to be better than our competitor, and included them in this fourth concept. So we combined concepts two and three to come up with yet a better fourth concept. So that's the pew chart and how we come up with that fourth concept that's even better than any of the existing ones prior to that. And again, this tool is only as useful as your judgment, judgments. You can actually make these numbers turn out any way you want to, but uh, be as objective as you can and make your judgments as uh, judiciously as you can. You should also be prepared to justify any decisions you made with brief back of the envelope calculations and be prepared to provide documentation to show uh, how your concepts are actually better than the competition. The next video we'll talk about using the quality function deployment house of quality matrix in the Demadra toolbox to use what's known as decision matrix to help you choose your